Hi, my name is Frank White and welcome to another one of my YouTube videos. Today I am going to talk about the Sigma 50 to 500 millimeter F4.5 to 6.3 APO DG OS HSM lens. Boy, and that's a mouthful, but this lens is a hand for. First, I'm going to start off by talking about what's in a name. This 50 to 500 millimeter lens is just that, a 50 millimeter lens at the short end. Um, you can equate that to your nifty 50 and a 500 millimeter lens at the long end. Um, if you think about a Canon 5 or 600 millimeter, then you're talking somewhere um, between $5,000 and $12,000 for, for the lens. This lens is sub $2,000. In fact, right now it's on Sigma's website at um, $1,509, which Sigma claims is $150 off of its suggested, uh, I'm sorry, of its manufactured retail value of $1,659. But even at $1,600, to me, this is still a bargain. I've had this lens a couple years now and I am delighted with it. Um, I, I would not give it up um, because that 50 to 500 range, uh, millimeter range is golden. I can take this lens and walk around with it and treat it as an everyday walk around lens at the 50 millimeter range or I can go out and do some wildlife shooting at the 500 millimeter range, millimeter range and of course anything in between. Now um, just to finish going over what's in a name, the, four point, the F 4.5 to 6.3 range makes this relatively a slow lens. And by that, I mean you have to slow down your shutter speed under certain lighting conditions to get enough light in to get a good exposure. APO is Sigma's designation to indicate that this lens has at least two low dispersion elements to help this lens fight chromatic aberrations and it also has multi-layered coatings to help it fight or reduce sun, fla sun flare. One special note that I want to make about the APO system uh, our designation is that this particular lens uh, rather than having two low dispersion elements or special low dispersion elements. It has four special low dispersion elements. Okay, and the DG designation means that this lens is designed for a full frame camera, but at least in Canon's case, it has no problems adapting to a crop sensor body. Uh, the only thing is that when you adapt it to a crop sensor body, then to get the correct focal length, then you really do need to do the calculations, the mathematical calculations, um, and by multiplying the focal length times the crop factor um, for this Canon Rebel T2i, the, the focal length of the lens is 50 millimeters at the short end and the crop factor is 1.6 so I just simply multiply that to come out with the the focal length at the short end for this lens and I do likewise for the long end and all points in between um, the long end being the 500 millimeters okay Sigma uh, considers this lens in Sigma considers this lens an all-in-one lens, and so do I. Um, but one of the things that I do notice that they mention on their website is that this lens uh, makes a good backpacking lens, and I beg to differ with that. Um, occasionally, I hike. I have hiked uh, sections of the Appalachian Trail, and to put it in my camera bag 
strap it to my back and, do, and go on a day hike is fine. Um, to walk around at events, uh, shooting uh, dog shows and, and um, uh, walk around uh, uh, hiking for burden, this land is, is fine. But for backpacking, where you literally are carrying your house, your clothing, your food, and a 4.4 pound lens, um, for me is not feasible, undoable. Well, I'm not gonna say undoable, but not that feasible. It takes some of the, the joy out of backpacking when you're carrying such a load. But if, you, if, I, if I were to backpack with the intent of specifically to, to capture wildlife, then I would certainly consider this land as a backpacking land. But just to have it as a carry along land, then you know, I, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, one of the things that I like about this lens is, it, is the OS designation, the optical stabilization, which is um, Sigma's version of Canon's image stabilization. The, the optical stabilization is built into the lens, not the camera body. Uh, Sigma claims that the optical stabilization should allow you to shoot as much as four stops lower. Uh, I have not tested that, but I can tell you that in my experience, the optical stabilization does work and it works well. This lens comes with a lens hood that's, um, that's made to adapt to a 95 millimeter lens on the front side, which is a relatively large piece of glass on the front end. So it's always good, in spite of the multi-layer coatings, to use a lens hood, not only to protect the lens itself, but to reduce the possibility of sun flaring, unless that's a artistic element. If you want to use, a, use filters with this lens, then you'll be hard pressed to find 95 millimeter filters, however, Sigma does provide a step down ring to, um, to I think 86 millimeters that, so that you can find aftermarket lens filters that will adapt to this lens, including um, your, your ND filters. Now, there is a note that I've gotten from Sigma's website, and I'm just gonna read it out loud. The filter size of this lens is diameter 95 millimeters and the lens is supplied with a step down ring enabling digital cameras with a APS-C size image sensor to use a diameter 86 millimeter filter. It is not possible to use a polarizing filter with the step down ring. If you attach a polarizing filter you will not be able to remove it from the lens again. So that's something for, for, for you guys who take these awesome landscape pictures and you want to darken the sky to keep in mind. Uh, you don't want to use a polarizing filter with, the, with this lens, lens. Here are a few images that you can check out that I was able to grab with this, with this lens including these awesome deer that I was able to capture while I was driving along the Blue Ridge Highway in North Carolina. So, I am gonna close, enjoy these images. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you don't like this video, and I, and I hope you do, please uh, let me know by hitting the dislike and if you have any comments, I'd be glad to hear them. I do read each and every comment. And please take a moment to subscribe to this. Please take a moment to subscribe to my channel.